uh, is one I like the, the most because if you ever go hunting, hiking, camping, fishing, survival, like the barbecue. Oh, it's a fire starter too? Yeah, you got a fire starter in there too. Knife sharpener system. Yeah. Uh, so let's say you're going to sharpen a knife like this. I don't hold the knife like this in my hand. It's actually where it'll balance. And then I hook it under my hand a little bit so it's just kind of sitting there like this. A lot of it is just sitting on these two fingers. And I take this and about where it balances, okay, and then I just move my fingers forward a little bit. I capture it down here in my hand. Part of the reason I capture it because I can actually roll it now and it pivots. So I'll go out and back like this, out. You can go just one way, or you can come back this way, or you can go out and back. Just like that. Out and back. Out and back. We gotta make a statement like that. What if you just went like the other this. way? Would that be out, back, out. back and out? Yeah, back out. <laughs> yeah, just like this. Okay, now, you're going to match the bevel about like this. Don't tip it up trying to get to the cutting edge. You'll dull the knife. Yeah. So about, see that right there is parallel. Oh, parallel. Tip with it up about 12 degrees. Yeah. In other words, about an eighth of an inch between here and the, and the knife. Not a quarter or half inch. And then you're going to be up right, see this point, you're going to be almost across from it, just a little behind it. You can come up here, but don't put your finger up here and stuff. So I'm going to let you hold the knife where it kind of balances, and then just like this, see it, most, most of the work is done with my wrist. That way I don't have to move my arm and shoulder all the time like this. This is really slow. This is fast. And so I depend a little bit more on speed than uh, pressure on the blade. How do you know you're it's efficient? How do you know what? Look at it or you just test it on oh, paper. Oh, you can actually, and you may not like this, especially if you have $40 fingernails. If, you, if it'll stick and just sit there and take the fingernail off, okay, that's really sharp. Yeah. Or you can take a piece of paper and slice it. See, that's cool. Or you take a piece of meat or whatever, you know, and you cut it. This but, is good because I've been interested in getting a knife sharpener because that's the one thing I don't have yet. Yeah, I'll well, see. I bought more a bush pad. Yeah, knife. Yeah. So. See, and if, let's say you got a uh, bread knife at home. You can either do this with your thumb, make a pivot out of your thumb, put your right thumb under your thumb. Now, not up here like this because then it's all wobbly. But anchor it right here and then just go along like this. Okay, or you can just let it bump kind of easy. Yes, yeah, you're not putting up a lot of pressure. Not much. Yeah. This is a 50-year-old knife, so the factory cutting edge, the sharpness is long gone. But the fact of the matter is, it's really a sharp knife. So if you want to mess with it now for a little while, hold the knife about like this. You can even put your finger on the blade. And then about like this. Okay, now just, you're right-handed? I'm right -handed. Okay, there you go. There you go. And then you're going to want to turn the knife a little bit this way. And I don't, I don't get kind of blocked up like this. Um, I actually am a, just a, just above belly button height and about 10 inches from my body. So everything just pivots. This is harder to work. And just like this. Yeah. And you don't want your finger up there. You actually want you want to hang on to it and support it with your thumb and finger and just a little pressure. Not much, but a little, so it doesn't move around in your fingers. Yeah. Now you're gonna to want to put about ten times more pressure because you're just going like this. Oh yeah, just yeah, about like that, about like that right there. You don't don't get lazy and, and tip the knife up or anything. You actually have to stay at the right angle until it's sharp. Just like that. Just like that. More pressure and actually get a hold of the sharpener so it doesn't fall out of your hand. Yeah, just, just a little, no, no white nothing. But enough pressure that you can actually move right along. You know, just like that. Yep, then I just flip the knife, flip the knife, flip the knife. And then it might be easier, I don't know, without the purse on. And then just a, just a little more pressure, not much. Okay, hold one finger out. Just finger, put your finger out. It'd be about like this. See, I'm actually putting a little 
pressure on it. And if I'm going to put a little pressure on it, I actually have to hold this just just well enough that it doesn't fall out of my fingers. So, and that's right here. Yep. And then be clear up here like this. Tuck it in out like that. And then uh, I always have to pretend I'm sharpening because I absolutely cannot just hold this the way I'm going to get. And then you just flip it back and forth. Yeah. See, I roll it. I, I don't turn my hand. Okay, I, see. I roll it in my fingers, and that's why I have to capture it right here. And with my ring finger, my middle finger, index, and thumb, so that it's like this. My little finger is actually just kind of holding this finger over, because it has nothing else to do. So it'd be just like that, like this. More pressure, and see you keep sliding your fingers back. Okay. So it's going to be about like that. I actually... It's sort of parallel, almost parallel with my thumb. Bring it back into the center of your hand and actually put a tiny dimple so that it's actually pivoting in my hand. That way I can I can control it completely and it isn't gonna fall out of my hand. And then just like that, just like this, just like that. And even at, and at home, honest to God, just sit around while you're watching TV and sharpen all your knives. Next thing you know, it just becomes part of your hand. Right. right now, you're nervous. You've never done this before. You know. And you have videos. Yeah. Yeah. These will all come out in about a week on, on YouTube. On Charcoal's Best YouTube. Okay. And you can make any knife. These are little kid scissors. I think they're 49 cents. Little kid scissors are made. They're not sharpened, so they really cut. Okay. My little kid scissors aren't little kid scissors anymore. Oh, okay. see, I do a lot of crafts, so I use those little scissors like that. See? There's a little tiny bevel on there this way. Just little. So we just do this. Pick it up a little. Go like that. And then like this. And then do it again. And then flat. And now you can actually open and close these. You can tell by the way they feel. They cut. Oh yeah, you can feel it. Yeah. So any knife, any blade, any configuration. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they cut. These are 11 years old. I have tortured these scissors. I used to be a real smart ass with those when they were newer, say only five years old. There's two layers. Four layers, eight layers, 16 layers, 32 layers. Okay. This is how I kind of ruined my scissors. I'd say, I'd say, oops, they they did that. That's hard on scissors. Okay. But if I take my scissors, I can actually cut through 32 layers of paper without too much trouble. And of course, they got worse and worse. And that once, do it again here. These were actually lightly serrated when I bought them 11 years later. They're still serrated. And if it's just one layer of paper, they cut really good. Okay, that is a survival. Yeah, this is more of a survival because it's got a whistle. It's got the fire starter in there. If you take medication, you really ought to have it somewhere where you know it is. If you're hiking, camping, fishing, here's where you might put your days. Okay, you can put fish hooks, you can put uh, matches, you know, fishing line, whatever. That's a pretty good size cavity in there. So then you just put this back on there. And you sharpen with it just like this. So how do you decide? Okay, if I have an incredibly dull, let's say you inherited grandma's knife and it hasn't been sharpened in 20 years. What about this? This is super dull. Okay, this is what you would do. See all the metal that oh. came off? Yeah, that's for like a very, very dull. Horribly dull cheap knife. I would never do that to my good. None of these knives would I ever run through a V notch. Okay, let me see that one. That one is right on the verge of dull. Yeah? Did you like... Uh, I used to try this in the That one's not... See? Yeah. Okay. We'll cut it off. No. Let's see what you can do. Not at all. 
I put it on the table because I'm adding pressure to it and I want to back it up with the table so the blade doesn't just bend and move out of the way, just like that. Notice I'm still not pressing too hard on the blade. I'll be sold. I'm already Be sold. careful how you say that. I'm just waiting to see. Oh my. Yeah, I was already sold. Did I tell you? Did, did I, I tell, tell you? you? Or did I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> Live knife sharpening lessons by Brad Buckner of sharpensbest.com. You are amazing as always. Oh, with the pizza guy. That's not the sharp part. I'll find the sharp part. That's plenty sharp for a pizza knife. Right.